grew up during a war in Iran. And I, I'm so curious, what is it like watching these images and seeing Ukraine under attack? Yeah, Emily, and thank you for having me here. Um, it's really tough. War, war is really terrible. And for me, it's personal because I, I was seven years old um, when uh, living in Iran when Iraq invaded us. And uh, for the next five years, you know, um, there was just this ever-present sense of fear. And as a, as a child, it's really difficult, um, you know, the, not just the fear, but the seeing, your, seeing the grown-ups be afraid, seeing your parents be stressed out or anxious, uh, and not knowing what's going to happen next is particularly difficult for children. And um, I will say, though, on the, on the bright side, my twin brother and I were very lucky because we had a uh, special form of escape. As you know, I've told you in the past, um, we were amongst the only kids in the country to have a computer, and we learned how to program. And that, for us, was a way to have a way to create our own world you know, in software that you know, that we could control and that followed the rules and that was predictable. And it's, that was an enormous comfort for us, um, you know, to have that. And I would say it helped us get through. And, and you both founded a company called Code.org, which I believe you can access anywhere. I mean, do you have any advice for parents and children who are there right now trying to figure out how to pass the days and survive? It's hard. It's not my place to give advice, but I will say, I, if I can brag about my, my brother Hadi a bit, I mean, he has led that um, organization, Code.org, to have so much impact. And, you know, tens of millions of kids worldwide are now able to program. And, um, and it's, it is not just a skill that helps them think, but it also helps them cope. In Ukraine alone, six and a half million kids use Code.org, which out of a country of 44 million, that's a large number. And, um, you know, and having that escape is, is, I'm sure, comforting to them. I do also want to, I think it's, we need to mention that this is not the only unjust war going on right now. You know, war is terrible and, and it really needs to stop. Mm -hmm. But there are also kids coding in Iraq, which has been, you know, occupied by the U.S. for 20 years now. And there are kids coding on Code.org in Yemen, which is being bombed as we speak. And those are wars that I don't think Americans support either. Um, but there are wars that our government has been supporting. And the sad thing is that these kids are innocent, regardless of their skin color or how they were born or where they were born. It's, you know, and it's not fair for them to have to pay some price uh, because of these wars. Now, I know one of the most important things to you has been to find tech talent, no matter who they are or where they are, and give them the tools to succeed, which is what you're doing at NEO. And you have launched this new accelerator. What is the goal here and how will it work in the context of other opportunities that exist in the tech industry? Yeah, well, you know, uh, I mean, my own path was, uh, you know, very much the American dream in that I came to America with not very much other than the ability to program. And that enabled me, you know, to have this power to create. And being able to, to program means you can create apps and even build a company. And in, in my case, I started a company when I was 23 and became successful. And um, today, uh, uh, kids who are graduating from college with that ability have the potential to create the, um, the epochal companies of the future. And we've created, we've just announced this program, uh, Neo Accelerator, which is aiming specifically for relatively young engineering leaders, uh, you know, one to four years out of college who want to start companies and to give them both financial support and mentorship to help them build great startups. And it's, uh, it's a program that is a, a three-month program that includes uh, a four-week-long retreat in Oregon to kick it off where um, founders of companies will live under the same roof alongside each other and mentors. Um, and it'll culminate at the end of the program with a, uh, a pitch day, not to raise more money, but to pitch other engineers, to pitch um, software engineers to join your team to help you with recruiting, because that's the, one of the toughest problems facing all companies today. Now, it's been described as the anti-YC, a reference to Y Combinator, which is a long-established accelerator in Silicon Valley that has been operating here for years. 
What do you think YC is doing wrong and how will Neo do some of those things differently? So Y Combinator is an incredible and amazing organization. And um, I have, it's, it's incredibly inspiring. I would say it's not an exaggeration to say it's one of the most impactful organizations of the 21st century if you look at all the amazing companies they've spawned. And I, I don't think they're doing something wrong. It's that as the startup world has expanded and become more and more vibrant, um, there's room for different, um, you know, for different investors to support different types of companies. And Y Combinator's primary uh, focus or the, the culmination of their program is to help with fundraising. And it appeals to companies who are struggling with fundraising. You know, and as access to capital has become, um, you know, capital has become more and more abundant in the last couple of years, it hasn't been equally distributed. There are some companies for whom it's really easy to raise funds, and that's, you know, uh, just less relevant to them. And there's others for whom it's more difficult. So Y Combinator today has, um, has really shifted to focus on emerging markets, a uh, very large and lucrative opportunity helping countries from Africa, Latin America, et cetera, get access to capital. And it's an amazing business, uh, which is doing really great work. It is less relevant than it used to be for, uh, for top engineers who are perhaps graduating from American universities or graduating from American tech companies like Google or Stripe or Microsoft and starting companies. Because for them, uh, they don't need help with raising money. They, you know, it's so easy for them to raise money these days. They need help with other things. And so we're tailoring a program to help them with the things that are their challenges.